How's it going, everybody? Andrew Zarian here, Wrestling Observer Live. We're here every day, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Eastern with Jim Valley on Saturdays, and Sunday, 6 p.m. with me. Happy New Year. Holy moly, it's 2023. <laughs> we're in the future. This is the future, right? When you were a kid, I don't know how old you guys are, I'm dating myself, but this is like an unheard of future year. <laughs> 2023 where are the flying cars where's the teleportation where are all the cures for everything nothing just regular life <laughs> but holy moly i hope you guys had a great 2022 i wish all of you a great 2023 wrestling is going to be pretty wild this year pivotal year you know a lot of stuff happened last year tremendous uh this is our we're going to talk about all the negative, all the bad stuff, the worst of 2022. Last week, we did the cool stuff. We did, like, the really fun wrestling. We did the good wrestling stuff. This is going to be all the scandals, all the bad stuff that happened. But what a year it was. Vince McMahon stepping down. CM Punk losing his mind in the press conference. Sasha and Naomi walking out. Ric Flair coming out of retirement and wrestling again. After all the health issues. Cody Rhodes, an EVP, one of the founders, and I'm using hand quotes here, of AEW, gone, left, went back to WWE, the place that he did not want to go back to. I, I mean, I don't think a lot of us would have guessed any of this was happening. But we're going to talk about all of it and a whole lot more. Also, SmackDown, wild SmackDown last night. They really did everything. When we come back from break, a lot to go into wrestling Observer Live here on Sports Byline, New Year's edition. We'll see you right after this. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live, New Year's edition here with me, Andrew Zarian, on a Sunday. I am exhausted from last night. I'm so tired. <laughs> I think we all are. Everybody here is exhausted. Listen, good start to the year. I had a big party last night. No, I did nothing last night. I, I fell asleep before before the ball even dropped. <laughs> I was It was wonderful. I woke up in the middle of the night. I was like, what time is it? It's like 2.30. I'm like, oh, beautiful. I missed all of this. Before we go into the worst stuff, I want to talk about SmackDown from Friday night. This was a loaded show. Uh, you could see that they attempted everything to kind of pop this number. We're going to find out what the number is tomorrow. Or, or actually, it might be delayed, maybe Tuesday. But... I can't imagine it that poorly. We saw the return of John Cena in the main event. John Cena and Kevin Owens against Roman Reigns and Sammy. Cool stuff. Uh, John did not do much. MGR producer, what did you think of John Cena coming out? Um, he looks older. <laughs> he does look older. He wasn't, you know, he's still in great shape, but he didn't really do much. Uh, you know, they're getting ready. This is WrestleMania season. They've introduced them now, and I'm sure this is going to continue on into something else. The rumors are Logan Paul. I don't know if that's the match to have at WrestleMania, but obviously he's going to be involved. They also had more of Uncle Howdy. I, you know, I was watching that segment on Friday, and, and I'm watching this, and I'm like, man, you know, and you wonder why did they start the show off with this? They started it off because, think about it, you're channel surfing, right? And all of a sudden you see that, that weirdo door with the light flashing through it. You, you stop and you watch. And my wife my wife came in the room. She just stopped to watch. She's like, what are you watching? I'm like, wrestling. She's like, wow, what's going on there? So Definitely we got a... It was an eye catcher. <laughs> and that's the whole purpose of it, right? To start the show with something that people are going to lock into. I, I'm curious what the quarters are, but... This is where it went interesting, right? So he Bray comes out, does his promo. Here comes LA Knight. Does his thing. And Uncle Howdy now shows up. Makes his way to the ring. And he takes down Bray. And now the, and we got more of a shot of Uncle Howdy. And we saw more of his mannerisms. Who do you think Uncle Howdy is? And first of all, what a ridiculous name. I tweeted this. And I made the mistake yeah, of, of using the hashtag SmackDown. And I got all, I guess, the, the like... <laughs> The crazy people telling me how I'm wrong and how what a wonderful name Uncle Howdy is. And people were comparing it to The Rock. And they're like, well, The Rock is a stupid name and it got over. I'm like, you're comparing The Rock and Uncle Howdy? <laughs> what the Isn't hell? Isn't this supposed to be somehow a uh, um, 
a remembrance of uh, Luke Harper or um, Brody. Yes. Harper. I think yeah. that's what it is, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, I just said it's what a ridiculous name. What a ridiculous character. Mm -hmm. uh, just wild. Uh, who do you think it is? You think it's Bo? You think it's Bo? I think it I, Bo Dallas. Um, you suggested yesterday um, uh, Vincent from ROH. I didn't. I, I just I sent that in a group chat as like a joke, but a lot of people were saying mm -hmm. it could be Vincent. I, yeah. I, I don't think it's Vincent because you look at the beard and there's, there's parts that the mannerism, the mannerism look a lot like Bo Dallas. That's all I'm gonna say. Well, it probably is we'll Bo. We'll find I, out in time. Yeah, it, but we'll find out. I mean, we saw we we're getting closer to it, right? Mm -hmm. Of course. Well, what did you think of that segment? You you thought it was wacky? I thought it was a little weird. I mean, it was weird. I was like, huh? I was like, that's how they're ending it. I mean, I guess it keeps your interest because now you want to know what's uh, happens next week. So yeah. For that for that purpose, it worked. So now we're going to know where it is. We know we're getting the match at Royal Rumble. And I'm uh, guessing this LA is the Knight lights and, out uh, match, right? That's the pitch, the pitch. Black, pitch black match. Yes. And, Mountain Dew and presents is, the pitch black match. Yeah. Which is going to be weird. <laughs> it's going to be wacky. I don't know. We'll see it's, what happens. I mean, what is it? Just a lights out match? Uh, I guess. Like, I don't know. I, it, turn, they're in the pitch black, the I guess. Off. Yeah. Lights off. <laughs> I mean, why, why, why make it? Why, why not just blindfold them? Know. It's the same. It's the same thing. I, 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 we'll see. <laughs> I don't know. Also, we saw the return of Charlotte Flair. Charlotte returned. Uh, very unexpected. Came out. Ronda had a match. Ronda wins the match. Charlotte comes out, challenges her for the title, and beats her for the title. She's a seven-time. Women's heavyweight, women's world champion now? 14 time. Four, is it 14? Yes, it's 14. Four, is it they're, seven they're, SmackDown and, and, and split? It must be seven, yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. But altogether, it's 14 times, and that's not including the NXT range, I don't think, unless they've... I don't know. I, I, I thought it was like seven times for SmackDown, and then, and, and, you know... It very well could be. It very could well be could be. I, I could be wrong, but... All right, Charlotte's back, and she has the title... W w that was out of nowhere. I saw on Twitter people were very happy that Charlotte came back and won the title because he beat she and beat she was Ronda. Hated. Yeah, she because was I guess so I guess long. in the scale of dislike <laughs> on the internet, Charlotte is above or, or Ronda's above Charlotte as far as being disliked at this point. So people were happy that the title was off of Ronda. Uh, all right, man. You know. It's WrestleMania season. Charlotte's back. I think a lot of people expected her to be back around Rus uh, Royal Rumble. A lot of people had anticipated that she could possibly win Royal Rumble. But maybe this is leading now into, uh, you know, maybe Rhea could win Royal Rumble. Maybe uh, Ronda could win Royal Rumble, which I don't think that that's the direction they should go. But the rumor now is that the Becky Lynch and Ronda Rousey match is no longer set to happen at WrestleMania. We're looking at Rhea Ripley and Ronda Rousey for the title. We'll see how they get there. But it seems like it's really cooled off. I, the, the Becky and, and Ronda stuff was really hot. They should have done it when they had the chance, really. I mean, they were both in, in pivotal positions. Ronda had just come to the company. People were really into her. They liked her style. It wasn't very pro wrestling. It was more realistic based on how she was moving. Uh, her character was far more uh, likable. And Becky was hot, super hot. That was the moment they could have done it. But time, you know, time changed everything. Now it's all totally cooled off. So we'll see. And uh, we'll, we'll, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not as into it as I, as I was maybe even a year ago. I don't know if I want to see it happen. But it was an interesting SmackDown. I want to hear from you guys. Let me know what you thought of it. Because, uh, you know, this, this is this is the last show of the year. This is the memory they want you to have going into the new year. And there's a lot going on. Also, AEW revamping the production on Wednesday. Matt, are you into this, MG? Uh, is it a big deal what do you for mean, you? Into the, what, the new production? Yeah. I mean, yes and no. I mean, it's fun to see different things. I mean, I... I've never had a problem with what they were doing. So it's hard to say they needed something different from my perspective, but I can see where people like, you know, a new look and, and make it feel different. It's been three years. That, you're, 
Yeah, when you do that, you're telling everyone, hey, it's going to be different. Whatever we're putting on the screen, you're going to like better. So yeah, I think this that's is the point. You know, we, we Brian's going to do the prediction show, uh, obviously, his, his mega prediction show that he does every year. Uh, I'm curious to see what people are going to predict is going to happen for AEW this year. This is a this is a very important year for both companies. Obviously, we said that in the beginning of the the show, but for AEW especially, all eyes on them. And if they if they could you know up the production value just a tad here, a tad there, change the setup, make it look a little bit different, uh, change the shots a little, it, it may you know it may help a little bit. But I think their overall presentation has been great. I never had a problem with that presentation. I don't have a problem with the the disco lamp or or the chandelier in the in the top when they use that. I didn't have a problem with people coming out of two different sides. The only thing I don't like, and, and this was a big complaint of people, like I have the opposite opinion. I like when they had the lights on the crowd. It kind of added depth. But we'll see what they do. I'm very curious about this. We're gonna get that on Wednesday, AEW in Seattle. First time out in that market. It's a big deal. And then we also have Russell Kingdom happening. So that's also a huge deal. When we come back, we are going to go into the worst of 2022. And these could be matches. It could be events that happened. It could be uh, just wrestling news. I'm going to run down the list of the worst of. And then we're going to talk about this. And I want to hear from you guys. Tweet me at Andrew Zarin. Tell me what the worst moment in pro wrestling this year was. Some may think some of this stuff was the best, depending on where you stand. Like Vince McMahon leaving. You know, this could have been a positive for you, or it could be a negative. We'll be back right after this Wrestling Observer Live Sunday edition, New Year's edition with me. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live, New Year's Day edition. You know, we're talking about the worst of. We're going to run down this list. And I thought, who better? To talk about the worst stuff. Matt Ryan, everybody. The worst guest in the history of Wrestling Observer. Hi, everyone. Glad people, to be here. People don't realize what happened during the break. So No, uh, no, they don't. Uh, you know, Matt party too hard last night, apparently, and he couldn't get himself set up for the show. A little, little behind-the-scenes peek. And as Matt is you setting up tell and me scrambling. What to do? <laughs> I am a wrestling <laughs> promoter. And you will listen to me because I know everything. You know, this is what happened to Herb Abrams. You know, we're going down that rabbit that that path. I Get don't like it, man. Get me a George Goulas match. We'll break it down right now. I'll do it better than anybody. Where's Bobby Eaton? <laughs> Where's Bobby Eaton? I don't know, but he's setting up, and you see this whole set behind him, right? And the whole thing comes crashing, crashing down, and he had to put this thing together. We're running out of time. We're getting out of break, and he's putting it together. So good job at piecing yourself together, and Happy New Year, Matt. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Set myself on fire. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to happen. I'm okay with that. You know, big ratings. That's it. Smash TV. Crash TV, right? Just things people could just get. We need to bring Crash TV to podcasting. That's what we're going to do. The worst of 20. Podcasting was. (laughs) That is what podcasting was. Worst of 2022. I'm going to run down some of these moments and we're going to talk about some of this stuff, okay? Some bigger, some less. Our producer put this together. Matt, and, and you tell me. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll chime in here, obviously. I, this is not in, not in no order. So, obviously, Vince McMahon stepping down based on the the sexual allegations and the uh, the payoffs and all this stuff. Big, this is probably, I mean, I would say this is the biggest story in professional wrestling in many, many years. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if this did not happen, think about everything else that happened. Here's another one. Muffin Gate. CM Punk loses his mind during a post-media scrum and causes a major brawl to happen with the Elite on 9-4. Cody chooses not to re-sign with AEW February 15th. Sasha and Naomi walk out during Monday Night Raw, citing poor booking decisions. Ric Flair had his final match with a pacemaker. He came out of retirement, had a match. Big E broke his neck the night before Mania. Right before Mania, my... My apologies. MJF is th- is threatening to walk out of Double or Nothing weekend after missing a signing. I was there for that. That was that actually, you know, that was wild to begin with. It's it's Double or Nothing. It's mid year and already this stuff is happening, right? And that could have been a big story. 
After winning the it title, was a CM big story. That was a huge story. After CM Punk winning the title, he broke his foot stage diving, and he was out the entire summer. Jeff Hardy, suspected of suspected of DUI, arrested on six thirteen. Brian Kendricks got released by WWE, only to get picked up by AEW the same week. And then all of his conspiracy theory videos come out. Shane McMahon tried booking the Royal Rumble. <laughs> Oh, Lord. I think that's the most comical one here, right? It's harmless. Yeah, that was the silliest. Vince McMahon wrestled Pat McAfee at WrestleMania. Vince McMahon somehow took the worst stunner at WrestleMania. This has been a weird year in pro wrestling, and that says something, because every year when it's around this time and we're turning from the we're turning the calendar, it's like, this was a weird year. Very and strange There's year. always those little idiosyncratic moments that happen throughout our year in wrestling that make it feel weird, aside from the fact that we work and obsess over professional wrestling as adults who pay taxes. But when you look at everything that's happened this year and how everything's broken down, it's just, we talked about it last week, it's very 96, 97 in how things are breaking out, things are shaping We've had watershed moments. We've had rebrands ostensibly uh, for both companies. We're going to see what AEW's rebrand looks like on Wednesday. But um, 2022 had to happen for what will probably be two of the most interesting years in wrestling history because the TV contracts are coming up soon. Yeah, I got something cool here. And you guys obviously... Um not great for radio, but if you're watching, I, I was, I'm was i trying to find a book here. So Dave Meltzer's been putting out these Wrestling Observer yearbooks, right? Yeah. And these are all pivotal years. Obviously, 95 is a lit. This is not an ad for Dave. Dave doesn't need my ad. Dave, Dave does great. But I'm a big, listen, I'm a big fan of the, these yearbooks personally. So I've been collecting them. 95, huge year. Why? Nitro starts. 1999, mm -hmm. pivotal year. 93, another pivotal year. 97, obviously. 2014, another huge year for professional wrestling. These were all pivotal years. 01, that's, I mean, that's one of the biggest ones. 2007, huge year as well for news. Obviously, the Chris Benoit uh, news story. These are all mega story years. 2002 will definitely go down as, if not, I mean, one of the biggest moments where things shifted. In professional wrestling, Vince McMahon stepping down from WWE will forever be the biggest story uh, for the, for this year. But we have tons of other stories here. 2022, not 2002. 2002 was a big year too. That was a that was a yeah. that was a transition year. That was a big year too. Was Ring of so, Honor. Yeah, Ring the of Honor really got created. Full year without WCW or ECW existing in some form or fashion. Yeah. It was a pivotal year for the business. So let's let's go down this. Uh, from all the things that we listed, obviously uh, Jonathan Gresham getting into a shouting match with Tony Khan after dropping the Ring of Honor title. That was a story. Andrade getting suspended for punching Sammy Guevara. Uh, also Sammy's fight with Eddie Kingston. I mean, these are these are just negatives, obviously. Not the biggest negative, but Kota Bushi accusing New Japan of sexual harassment and abuse of power in the spring. Where I mean, obviously Vince McMahon is on top here, right? If we're going down the ranking, this is this is the biggest story here, the Vince story. But is CM Punk second? Is yeah, it's Cody leaving third. Second, Cody leaving third. I, yeah, Cody's third. Um, because it was one of those things where it was way too talked about to be shocking. Like it was devastating to AEW and a huge loss for them at such a pivotal point of time in Q1 of last year. But the tea leaves were always kind of there. Uh, if you were like in the last five or six months, it felt like it would be more plausible than the other two biggest stories. Like CM Punk going off on somebody is probable because CM Punk is a very, he tells his truth. But you th do you think it would have ended up he the way that it did? No, no, yeah. I don't think it would have ended like that. Um, the McMahon thing, you know, all the all the rumors about Vince McMahon going back decades um, have been there. 
but the way it metastasized and the way it kind of just completely toppled the WWE was, I think, the story. And the fact that it took... Top, toppled the the, toppled Vince, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like it, 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 well, it toppled. It, they had to rebuild their the entire C structure of their company, so it, you know, it kind of took that out from under them. And there's a lot of unanswered questions hey, about listen how that Stephanie power structure is going to be. And and this is this is amazing, right? Stephanie McMahon left the company. <laughs> yeah. This year, I, 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 I mean, and not only did she leave the company, she left the company in not a great way mm-hmm. uh, you know obviously she said she wants to spend more time with her family and, and and that was that's her story but i mean i was directly told by key people in that company on, on what a terrible job she did and it was and i came out and i and i was honest about it. i said you know this sounds like a burial on the way out i don't know why because she wasn't officially leaving a company that the 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 concept was she would return back, but not in the role that she was in. She would come back in some sort of position uh, when she decides to come back. And I mean, I was, I had the conversation and not too many days or weeks later, I can't remember the timeline. Vince was out and she's back in. That is not even on my list here of weird negative events in the world of professional wrestling. You know, Shane leaving. You know, think about it this way, right? January, Shane gets ousted after returning because of whatever happened at Rumble. We still don't have the full story there. I don't think Stephanie's we out, and Vince is out. All three McMahons at one point were, were out of the company. That's it was humongous. Yeah, and it just the way all of it happened, like Shane. At the Rumble, whatever happened, being an in-ring thing. And DX is Steph running the can... company now. Yeah. <laughs> it's a storyline within. The McMahons get ousted, and here comes Triple H and Shawn Michaels doing doing the, the crotch chops and, and running WWE. I mean, this is a storyline out of, out of 1999. Shows. Like, Road Dogs running house shows? I'm assuming Jason Sensation's in HR somewhere. Like... <laughs> X-Pac is uh, cultivating greenery somewhere out there in a smart way. Jason Sensation. Um, uh, Jason Sensation, not the ECW Jason Sensation. Jason Sensation, the impersonist. Uh, impressionist. Yeah, imp- impressionist, yeah. yes. From yes, Canada, yes. from Toronto. First time I heard Jason Sensation was on, I believe, was on Live Audio Wrestling. Oh, wow. And he was with, oh. uh, or it could have been, I, I saw a clip of him with, like, Dan Dan the Mouth Lebransky. And he was doing yeah, all these Dan. great impressions. Little uh, little retro there. I would love to know if Jason Sensation is running HR right now. Where's you know? Well, might as well. You got all of DX doing everything. I, I I it's wild to me. Wild to me. But I, obviously the Vince McMahon story is the big one here, uh, and the the effects of this will continue on for many many years. We'll see next year. I mean, if Brian's going to do the prediction show, I'm predicting we're going to see Vince on WWE TV this year. That's my prediction. It's not a bold but prediction. For what, for, for what though? Mania, I don't know. Waddle Mania down like weekend. this. He's going to waddle down and do ah, right, do something right, in the ring right. and then call it a day. But listen, when we He's come back able. from break, when we come back from break, I, I want to run down some of the other big stories here because a lot of this stuff is going to play a part this year. Obviously, CM Punk, and we'll talk about the aftermath of this. But CM Punk, Cody, uh, Sasha, where she ends up, we'll find out in the next couple of weeks. All of this stuff is going to be big news stories in 2023, but... A lot of it was the negative of 2022. When we come back, all this and a whole lot more here on Wrestling Observer Live, New Year's edition. Join me right after this. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live, New Year's edition. Joined by Matt Ryan here. Hey, Matt. Hello. I'm, so we were I'm talking doing about, fantastic now. Yeah. yeah, your color's back. I mean, you're, you're, in, you're a better shade of pale. I'll tell you that. The contrast between, between our colors, song? the contrast, it's like, it's like the warmth on my camera is cranked all the way and yours is just cold. Well, well, you're, you're a cold. warm, lighthearted individual. I'm, I'm a cold Irish writer. Like it, it just transposes. It, it, it just exudes itself. I'm actually in Miami right now. I'm, I'm on <laughs> Miami beach. This is you tan. <laughs> Unfortunately, your beard gets the color. Not your yeah. face. That that's where all the tanning went. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a uh, sad fact. Listen, man, it's mania season. Get that main event tan going. I just need six uh, weeks. That's it. Give me six <laughs> weeks. I'll be, I'll be I'll be ready. I'll be ready. Let's talk about some of the other stories here, some of the negatives here. Um, our producer put the Ric Flair match on here. You know, it's hysterical. I rewatched this last night. <laughs> what, what a great New Year's Eve treat. My father came by, and he's like, hey, uh, do you have that Ric Flair match? And I was like, I do. He goes, you know, I watched some of it. Can you put it on? I want to watch the rest. My father loves Andrade, by the way. He's like, ah, oh, look at him. What a big star he is. He's I'm the like, son yeah, I never had. He's the son I never had. Why can't you look more like him? I'm like, I'm trying. <laughs> what do you think I'm doing here? I uh, would love to see you with a man bun. With like I a did little, have one. Little, you don't remember? A little dingle dangle in the back. No, no. Oh, that's got to be the entire we met. In, no, entirety of the pandemic, dude. Oh, yeah, you're right. I just didn't see the back of your head. Yeah, I had my hair was down to like my chin. I had it in a little bun. Aw. We, it was we, very we, nice. We missed out on boy band Andrew era. This sucks. Listen, and one of my clients, one of my clients, he hates long hair. He's this older man. And he would just constantly tell me to shave my sideburns. And I and I kept shaving my sideburns. <laughs> and then next thing, he's like, shave your sideburns. I, change, I, I shave my beard. Next thing, I'm like, he's like, shave your sideburns. I shave my whole head. And he looks at me. He's like, shave your sideburns. It's wild. He kicked me off that team, that baseball team. It was unbelievable. Better than working for Steinbrenner, though. Way better than working for Steinbrenner. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about this, but the Ric Flair match, I rewatched it last night and just, you know, there were moments like when I watched and I swore to myself, I'd never want to watch it again. And I ended up watching it again and just what a bonkers thing that they put on. It was such a weird show. Like it was an indie show with Jim Crockett promotions, dressing and GCW <laughs> and like Jeff Jarrett and Ric Flair, were, like it felt, and I'm not insulting it. There were great matches on that. There were, yeah. And as a fan of old school wrestling iconography, you know, big hit with me in that in that sense. But you think they should keep the JCP title, uh, the 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 name, and and run these once a year at least? I I'd, I'd, I'd be interested to see what happens. I would too. Um, it felt like an EW War game. <clears throat> um, it, it did. It felt like. You were like, oh, Jim Crockett Promotions 2022. Who's available? On top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course the main event is Jeff Jarrett and Ric Flair, right? <laughs> I mean, it's that would definitely that... be the main event on a on a, on a a weird booked online promotion. But listen, Ric Flair, he wrestled his, I guess, maybe not his last match. He, he came after, after this. And he's like, I want to do it again. But oh, please don't. huge. But you know, like something that really has has gone under the radar because it was such a big year unfortunately biggie broke his neck and yeah very dangerously and he has not wrestled we don't know when he's going to come back if he's coming back i would love for him to come back uh just very scary moment because he was in the run of his life right he was he was yeah, he, set it was at the it was after his wwe title run seemed like the new day was rehabbed refreshed um and ready to have a great feud with the Brawling Brutes. Uh, they weren't known that at the time, but uh, Sheamus and those guys, big meaty men slapping meat was a very fun time. And then accident, you know, an accident happened. But the thing that I uh, that gives me hope out of this is that Big E's personality hasn't changed. His zest for life, you know, yeah. out outwardly, it seems that things are okay in that regard. Um whether or not he ever steps into the ring again, all I care about is him being healthy because who wouldn't want to see Big E become the next Teddy Long or, you know, end up managing the New Day or sitting a commentary? Like, there's a road for him. Oh, because he's wrestling. so entertaining, yeah. Yeah, he's just so damn good at that part of the business that and likeable. if he was, yes, li his likability is insane. Uh, remember him on Total Divas, just I, being himself. I, I, I I've like only seen clips of it. Biggie like that. Yeah, I've only seen clips of it. I never really watched that show. Did you watch it? I watched it. I watched it habitually. Did you really? Because, did you like it? Yeah. Or did you hate watch it? It was a mix of both. Like <laughs> I'm not a reality show guy. Yeah. But it was just. It was like it was like any other trash television. It's like. How ridiculous is this going to get? Who's going to hate who? Like, 
You're just booking it in your mind. Yeah. Now, I'm going to ask you about the CM Punk stuff, and, and we could give a little oh, prediction okay. here, and I want to see what you think happens. Obviously, this was the worst stuff for AEW for a number of reasons. One, it's your top guy. He's hurt again. CM Punk got hurt. He came back, got hurt again, lost his mind, uh, got into a fight with the Elite. They were suspended for two months. You lost Kenny from TV. You lost the Bucks from TV. The, the, the negative media attention here, the negative stigma against your company. What happens now? Um, either a legal fight between the Punk and AEW to get out of his contract, or everybody sits down in the new year, hashes things out, and we see an angle come out of it. Like, there's the most probable option is Punk sits out the rest of his contract. And what a, what a shame and, that is. Yeah, like this For is everybody. The, I mean, if you're on the Punk yeah. side of things, yeah, you're not going to see him wrestle. If you're on the AW side of things, you're going to pay him to sit out and do nothing. And there's only one side that wins from this, and it's WWE. Yeah. Because the momentum for AEW slowed when all of this happened because they lost their biggest star in the company. Um... And it just kind of opened the floodgates for a litany of personnel issues between coworkers to come out into the light. And that's really slowed down their momentum and really created some heavy negative sentiment. But they've been bouncing back slowly but surely against this. Listen, when you look at uh, Brandon Thurston put out a statistic here and essentially said that Dynamite had a 2% increase in, in viewership this year. Uh, from yeah. 2021, and you know, it, I I'm willing to bet that it would not be two percent. It would be much. It would be maybe not much more, but maybe we would have seen you know a five to ten percent increase in in viewership if Kenny Omega was healthy and on TV, if CM mm -hmm. Punk was on TV throughout the year, it, you know, if this 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 media scrum issue did not happen. These are all things that would played a part here in, in their growth, and it's obvious. You know, yeah, you had a little bit of a growth, but you could see what happened here afterwards. You know, after Punk left and you don't have your top guy, uh, a lot of these guys got soured on everything that's happening. And that's a huge negative. That is a worse stuff. Yeah, most certainly. It's really, I feel sorry for the fans and for the locker room. Uh, we in the media, we have an opinion, but we really don't have a say in how this plays out because, you know, at the end of the day, we're observers. I pardon the pun. Um, it directly affects the audience and it directly affects those in the locker room and how they want to go out there and perform and fight for the brand that they work for. And we've seen a lot of tribalism in pro wrestling over the Listen, past... More you know, than ever. Yeah, more than ever. Yeah. And I've kind of been thinking about it and just like AEW and WWE have turned into religions for some people in the same way that the NFL and their favorite, like the Dallas Cowboys are a religion for sure. people who root for the Dallas Cowboys. The apostolization of pro wrestling companies, I think does more to divide pro wrestling than it does to build new fans because at this point, if you're becoming a wrestling fan and you enter into the social spaces for pro wrestling, which are so obviously social media, and you partake in the discourse, quote unquote. It's toxic. It's terrible. It, it's, it's toxic. It's very, uh, there's a lot of cognitive dissonance on all sides. And I don't have a horse in the race. I don't. I, I have people who work for both companies who I'm close with. I, you know, my Same with career's me. been varied enough. Yeah, like, yeah. My, my, I want everybody to succeed because it allows for me as a promoter to make more money because more people will be interested in wrestling and want to go to shows like Catalyst Wrestling's Rock to Bell House, there January 22nd. Thank you. I was waiting. At, uh, I was waiting. Bellhouseny.com. Uh, first new plug of the year. Uh, go to ca streamcatalystwrestling.com. Well. Hey, I think I might, I might be there. I may be there for that show. Well, you better. Uh, be but there. with 
with everything that goes on in wrestling, like trying to dunk on other companies doesn't own the way you think it does. And I think, because back when we were on the internet, and we can talk about this next week because we're running out of time, when you look at the message boards back in the day, only the real fervent ECW, CZW indie fans were that level. But now yeah. it's crossed over. No, 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 like no, it, no. Remember, I'm a little older them. than you. I'm a little older than you. I lived throughout that entirety of WCW versus WWE, and it was, it wasn't, I'm going to say this, and, and I'm, we were, we were dumber back then, right? We weren't as sophisticated. You were dumber, we're running out of time but here. You, it, wasn't but I wanna, as, it wasn't as malice. It, it wasn't, wasn't as malice. malice. It was just dumb takes, and then it would just go yeah. away. Now, it's, there's vitriol behind it, and it's all over wrestling, and the negativity is astronomical. I, you know, I, I. I write one positive thing and I will be told that I'm wrong. I write a negative thing. I will be told I'm, it doesn't matter. Someone wants to tell you you're wrong, but we're running out of time here. We got to run to a quick break. And then I want to get your thoughts on, on, on a, on a nice little bonus thing here after the break here, Ooh. wrestling observer live new year's edition. We'll be right back after this. Stay tuned. Wrestling Observer Live, final few minutes here on the show on Sports Byline. You know, right before the break, we were talking about, you know, just the wrestling discourse. What was your first, do you remember what the first, like, conversation you had on the internet about wrestling was? Because I, I 100% remember oh, mine. I, uh, I It was in a news group. I, it, I was, it for me, it was the DDT message board. I don't remember what it was, but I was... 13 so that all that's all you need to know is that i was 13 and on the internet so my opinion was wrong 1996 i was oh, no so mine is probably 1996 and it was on a news group somewhere Oof. that led me to some forum somewhere uh and then i just like totally forgot about it and then like you know 98 99 2000 like i was all in the forums and it kind of prepared me, and, and honestly, it, it was it was almost a positive for me because I realized how dumb people sound when they give their opinions without any kind of backing. <laughs> and I kind of pulled back. I was like, you know what? I don't want to be a dumb teenager on this website. I don't want to give my, my, my wacky takes and not have a clue about anything. So I would just read. And, you know, they were bad, like I said, but it's, it wasn't like mean-spirited. It was just really bad takes. You know what all you got? Hogan doesn't bear Hogan buries everybody. That was the big yeah. one, right? Hogan buries everybody and uh ECW is the best thing known to man. That's all it was. But guys, listen. Those two out of time here. Matt, always appreciate you. We'll have some fun this year. Guys, 2023 is here. And we're going to be here all year long on Sundays. Wrestling Observer live with me. We'll see you all next week. Take care.